Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the first American invasion of Vietnam. In general, when most of us think of American involvement in Vietnam, we invariably picture the protracted conflict of the 1960s and 70s. Yet, the first American military action in Vietnam occurred more than a century earlier, in the 1840s. At that time, Vietnam was divided into several sovereign states, each ruled by its own king and with its own diplomatic and commercial connections. To many European states, the kingdoms of Vietnam looked like potential profitable trading partners. For decades, France had had a growing interest in Vietnam, and for many years, French Catholic missionaries had been preaching and proselytized throughout the region. The kings of Vietnam viewed the missionaries as a threat to the social and political systems, and continually expelled or imprisoned the French preachers. In May of 1844, the frigate USS Constitution began a journey around the world. The ship, commanded by Captain John Mad Jack Percival, had sailed to South America, across the Atlantic to Africa, and onto the Indian Ocean in Southern Asia. By May 1845, the Constitution had arrived in Turan, today known as Da Nang, in the Vietnamese Kingdom of Annam. On May 13, 1845, a delegation of American officers went ashore to call upon local officials, who the sailors refer to as Mandarins. The brief meeting, conducted over tea, ended with an invitation for the Mandarins to visit the American ship, which they did on the following day. During this visit, one member of the Vietnamese party slipped a letter to Captain Percival. The note was a plea for help from the French missionary bishop Dominique Lefebvre, who said that he had been imprisoned and threatened with execution. Percival, struck by the plight of a fellow Westerner and Christian, immediately resolved to take action to secure the bishop's release. In short order, Mad Jack formed a landing party composed of Marines and sailors and led them to the Vietnamese official's house, where Percival demanded the release of the bishop. The Mandarin, who probably had no knowledge of the bishop, was unmoved by the captain's appeal, and Percival, frustrated by the situation, returned to the ship. For the next 12 days, the officers on the Constitution tried to secure the release of the French missionary. Despite American threats of violence, the Vietnamese officials insisted that they had no knowledge of or authority over the situation with Bishop Lefebvre, and tried to encourage the Americans to leave. The negotiations failed. Finally, on May 26, Percival and his crew realized the futility of the situation. The Constitution lifted anchor and began to sail away. Annoyed by the failure to free the bishop, Percival ordered his ship to fire at a small island on the way out of the harbor. All but one of the shots missed the target. French diplomats eventually negotiated for Bishop Lefebvre's release. The bishop would return to Vietnam, be imprisoned again, and have to be rescued by the French military. And one of the episodes that led to the eventual French conquest and colonization of Vietnam in the second half of the 19th century. As for Percival and the Constitution, they would finish the circumnavigation in 1847 and become legends in the U.S. Navy. The incident at Da Nang would be largely forgotten. In many ways, however, the Constitution's visit to Vietnam was a foreshadowing of later American frustrations and failures in that country. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.